Hello everyone, this is Betsy from Ideas Times 2. Today I have a tutorial for you. It's actually part two of a tutorial I have already uh, filmed. Um, the part one was about a month ago. And this will be part two of that same um, method. And I have something to admit. Um, I forgot to make my part two. I forgot I even said I was going to make a part two. And a couple of our subbies mentioned it and I, I'm i glad they did because usually when I say I'm going to do something, I do it and I really wanted to uh, complete the journal to show you the rest of the story, so to speak. So um, I'm so glad they said something and um, so this is part two of my split spine tutorial. Alright, so I, since I forgot to film my finishing of that journal, um, I have already sold it and so I can't show you the exact one I was working on but I did do a couple covers in the exact same way and I left off where we left off in that other video as well where where the uh, the spine is covered and the inside is now covered and it has a new spine brand new spine so we did that in part one and that's where we're at with these two covers so so I'm going to show you two different methods. One is a traveler's notebook method and the other one is a regular binding method. So we could, um, you know, show you a couple different things on that. So, <laughs> so, uh, so I was going to show you two things, how to finish it off, which would be the binding and the cover decorations. I was going to show you that as well. So let's start with this cover real quick. Um, this is a cover from a, an adorable 1903 book and um, so you can see the cover is kind of a shiny surface. It's adorable. I would have left it but it does have a lot of scratches on it, particularly up here. It's like the whole surface of the book is, is off and so I thought well I will, I mean it's just so precious to me but I, I did decide I'm going to cover that up and decorate it in a different way. So we're going to do that today. And then I wanted to show you this one is another book that I've started. So the spine piece is on already. I decided to put um, just a, a little uh, decoration on there for no no special purpose, just, just to make it look more interesting. And I didn't think about this when I put this on, but um, I do have to punch holes in here. So I hope I put this down far enough. We will see about that. So lesson learned, right? So I just want to run over what I did on this cover quickly. It's, it's little uh, dragon images from Victoria Designs. And these are all from her ephemera sheets. So this is a journal card. I stitched around it. I put a little fabric behind it and that's kind of my base. And then these are fussy cut images from a different uh, journal card and I just glued those right on. So all those things are just glued on. Before I glued it on though, I did put these brads in here. So this is um, a slide frame and so I cut that all out and I, I uh, put this um, dragonfly which was on the card. I just put that inside the window here. I could have put some acetate but I decided just to leave it uh, just leave it plain. So before I um, I glued this on I put those brads in so that those prongs in the back are nice and glued down as well. Everything's glued in the back. This number is from Tracy Fox and just a random random thing. Um, this is one of Victoria Designs as well. I did do a little stitching on it. This is a fussy cut image from one of her other journal cards and I just glued that right on top. It kind of makes it look like a slide or a photo or something kind of similar to this look. Um, this is a little Tim Holtz paper clip here and I this label is a Tracy Fox label and then this uh, washi tape is the cloth washi tape from Tim Holtz and I put I love these little mini paper clips from Tim Holtz so what I did was I glued this on 
and then put the paper clip on and then on the back of this before I glued that base down I put a piece of paper with glue just to secure that uh, paper clip so it doesn't come off and then I glued that whole thing at an angle like that so I'm debating whether I'll put something here I might try to find another uh, moth like this and stick that up here maybe so I'm trying to decide about that but that is that cover this will be made into a TN style and then this one I'm gonna bind uh, with a regular binding but before I do the binding methods I'm just gonna go ahead and um, show you what I do for decorations so I did pick some things out ahead of time and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use this I have some things on standby in case so this is in the same color family and I did want to keep it sort of monotone I'm not sure why like I brought, tried to bring some lavender in which looked really cool but for some reason I was just leaning toward monotone so I found a paper in my stash that was a similar color color in the color in the color family I inked around the edges and it's double-sided and I just I, <laughs> I hate cutting it and not using one of the sides but sometimes you have to do it so I'm using Fabri-Tac which I think is one of the best glues out there for paper crafting and almost like sometimes we're doing mixed mixed I don't know if you'd say mixed media but you you know mixed fibers and mixed uh, substrates I guess to glue together and Fabri-Tac is really really nice for that so what I'm doing here is just spreading the glue to the edges so that there's a nice thin layer at the edges so it stays but it should be a thin layer so that it doesn't ooze out and then you have to worry about getting the glue off of your book cover or your paper which I did a little bit right here okay so that covers covers up the image and the words Sometimes sometimes it's painful to cover up those beautiful things, but this is this is gonna be pretty too. We're we're just repurposing. Okay, so that's a nice base for that. So I have this pretty image. I think this is from Artie Mays and I think this is from Nature's Remedies. And I thought, well that's you know, that's pretty plain and it looks good and everything, but um, I thought I'd bring in a dark color. This is the same uh, paper as the spine, so. And I just tore the edges. I inked everything up. And then, then I thought, well, maybe we'll add some fiber and just a little dimension. Not a lot of dimension. Especially, like, this is cardstock, so I'm happy with that. I wish this was, pr I had printed this out on cardstock and I actually tried to get that done today, but I just could not, I couldn't find it in my computer where I had downloaded that file, so that was my, uh, that was my, uh, my mistake there, but, so I think I might do that, and I don't want too much thickness under here because this is just, it's a little bit heavier paper, but it is not cardstock, so I don't want it to get lumpy and bumpy. So I think I'm going to do something like that. That's kind of poking out a little bit. And then to sort of draw the eye down a little bit more over this way, I thought I would do this. I could maybe bring in some more of that green paper. Maybe I'll do that. So I'll rip this a little bit. I just need a, a tiny bit, so I don't think I want a giant piece of paper over there. There's not much room for too much in the way of uh, extra extra layers. So, all right, just ink those edges. We don't want the white core to show. So, I don't know if that's going to even matter. Well, I'll, I'll work on that. And then I thought a label, this is a green label, and I think that's a Tracy label. And then I came across this. I was looking for something. And first I thought a word would be great. And then I thought, well, maybe for something different to put a butterfly or a flower or something. A couple things I tried I didn't really like. I, there's a mushroom that were 
that was the perfect color, but I just, I don't know, I just didn't like it. But I thought butterflies and flowers, I guess, go together better. So it is off on the greens, and so I am going to try to mute that green just a little bit and see if we can get it to look more like that olive looking green. So I'm going to try that. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. I think that's I think that's good. I like the size of it and how it sort of extends past the label a little bit. So I like that. I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so the the way I usually do this is to glue the little pieces on the sides of here first before I you know before you glue it down. So all right, so I'm gonna. My glue's starting to run out, but I did buy a new one. So just a little smattering of glue there. And then I got it on the wrong side. Oh well, a little smattering of glue there. <laughs> Clearly didn't have it in the right spot. All right, and then I'm going to hold it up a little bit and just finagle it on. Okay, I think I'm going to trim that just a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and glue this in the back. my my ends tapered in so I'm gonna do that instead of having those straight straight edges I'm gonna make it sort of taper if I can here there we go so that'll just make it pop a little bit more and then on this side we're gonna do the do the same thing And this is just just a just a tiny touch down here. We will have more interest down here too with the labels. So that's that's good. My glue is starting to get all gummy. All right, about like that. Only, 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 only. I don't want it to show quite as much. Okay. All right, so I think I think that's good. This is maybe just a little too too big in that corner, and I think I want this tucked under just a tiny bit more. So before that glue dries too much. Okay, let's check now. All right, I think I like that. give that um, cheesecloth a little bit more uh, sepia color there okay I like that and then the labels gonna go label is going to go on top so I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down make sure we're nice and glued and once again make sure uh, the edges don't get big globs of glue so that it smooshes out Make sure to glue the center too. All right. Okay. Good. It's a very, very pretty piece of artwork here. This lavender. I have a soft spot for lavender. All right. Just make sure it's centered. And then make sure I don't have any glue on my fingers. Go 
Good. It's looking good. I like that. All right, and then, let's see. I think I do like the label. I was trying to trying to figure it out, but I think I do like the label. And I need to ink the edges just a tiny bit. It's already got a nice um, nice color to it, but just inking just to give it a little bit more dimension. And I'll glue the label down first. Spread that out in the same way. Make sure it's glued, nice and glued. And then I'm bringing it up a little bit here so that you can see all three layers of the paper, papers, but not too far over because those wings hang over a little bit. Make sure I didn't get it. Yep, that should work. Okay, smooth that down and then we'll, we'll tackle this. And I already inked it. I think that looks good. All right, so this will show you just a, just a little bit about doing the cover. And it doesn't have to be elaborate. Even just one layer or two layers of paper. But whatever, whatever you have, that's what I did. I just looked around to see what I had and pulled a bunch of things out and tried a few things. And okay, so that that will be my cover. All right, so I'm gonna grab my supplies for um, for the TN, the blue book that we're gonna work on. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right, I'm back, and I've got my my uh, my big bite, my crocodile. And I found some eyelets, and you'll need six eyelets if if you're going to use either three or four um, inserts. And I put my inserts together. I've got four of them. And either either way, if you have three inserts or four inserts, well, you can even have just a couple inserts, but if you're going to have up to four inserts, then you'll need at least three holes there. And, you know, there are other ways too. Like if I add another insert, I can wrap some elastic around um, on the inside and etc. But But three or four signatures is perfect for the three holes and it won't make this book in particular too big. So we're just going to stick with that for now. And what I did was um, I measured how tall my signature it, or my insert is to the spine, and then I measured. So I have a fourth inch at the top, a fourth inch on the bottom. I have so the holes should be about even with that, so that. If you put them down too low, then the fab or the elastic has to wrap around and it puts a lot of pressure on the paper. So we, we're going to try to make those holes just even level with the top and bottom of the signature. So with that in mind, that quarter inch in mind, I went ahead and very lightly with a pencil, I marked a quarter inch from the top and from the bottom. And I'm, I'm a bit of a measurer, and this may be overkill, but, um, <laughs> but that's what I usually do. Just draw a light line, which can easily be erased. And then I marked a half inch from the right side of the spine, a half inch from the left side, and then directly in the middle. So we're going to have holes in those three places. So... Um, I left a little bit of extra room in the center because two signatures are going to be actually using that hole, or two inserts are going to be using that hole. So there's going to be a little bit more room in the middle center than there is on either side. All right, so that's my reasoning on that, and I did the same thing on the bottom. So now all I need to do, and you maybe have a different method of punching holes, so whatever you've got... And the the eye or the the holes don't have to be super big because it's just going to hold one strand of elastic. One the center one will hold more than one strand of elastic, but 
Um, you definitely don't have to have hu super humongous holes, but I think my eyelets are all the same size, the 3 sixteenths inch size, so I'm going to go with that. I also wanted to mention quickly, so your shank, just make sure that the shank is, just hold it up to your um, cover and make sure that, see the shank extends past the width of the cover so so that there's plenty to um, of those for that shank to um, spread and tightly secure into the cover so just make sure your shank is long enough to go through the thickness of the cover oops and I just dropped it on the floor <laughs> of course right when I clean I always have an eyelid or two a button or two always 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 all right so I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll go through one of these I'm sure you guys all, all know and you have you probably have your systems but right at that intersection of my horizontal line and my little mark I'm gonna punch my holes Okay, and my my crocodile is it's a little bit um, hard to use. It's I I don't know the spring isn't working quite properly or something. All right, so then you will put your eyelet through pretty side on the outside of the cover and poke it through, and there's plenty of shank there to. Uh, spread and then and then grab on to the cover all right so now I'm going to set it to the the spreader or the I'm not sure what you call it I guess the setter the setter part of it <laughs> always have to stand up punch that down all right and then your prongs have spread your, uh, I've been calling it a shank, the shank has spread and grabbed onto the cover. So there, there you go. That is the way I'm going to do two more holes up here and then all three down here and I will be back in a minute. All right, everyone, I'm back with uh, my eyelets already set. So I have three at the top, three at the bottom. I've erased my pencil marks. And I also put one in the center uh, to make this like a traditional sort of TN style. So um, you could do it differently if you'd like to. You could put an eyelet in the back here and with a long ribbon so that it just wraps around. You could put an eyelet in the front cover and the back cover and uh, attach ribbon onto both of those and then tie it in a bow on the side. Um, so lots of different ways to do that. Um, I just decided to do it like that. So what we need... Uh, next is elastic so we can in put our inserts in and with three holes you'll need four lengths four heights of your book um, plus another half to give us room for the the cross uh, the cross uh, directional thing that we have to do and also for a knot so four heights of the book so there's one two three Four. Okay, and then oh, my elastic's all tangled up here. Four, and then about a half. Okay, so let's flip that. So we've got one length of elastic, and we'll I'll show you how to thread this through. So you'll start from, it doesn't matter top or bottom, but um, you'll start by poking the end in and then bring it, bringing it about halfway up and then just hold it there. And then the other end, we just go hor horizontally from this hole to the center hole, um, once again through the front of the cover. Okay. And then on the inside of the cover is where we're going to string the, the uh, elastic. So this goes straight up 
to the center hole. Okay, and then through the front of the book again, we're going to just go horizontal to the next hole over. Okay, and then string that down, straight down. Put the elastic through that hole. Okay, uh, horizontal to the center hole again. So this, this hole shares two elastics, which is why I gave it a little bit of extra room in the center. Okay, and then straight up, the center hole again, go down. And then do our little horizontal move over to that first hole that we started with. The first side, because the first hole is actually down here. First side, and then tie this one into a knot. I usually just do an overhand knot. And you can see I kind of overdid it with my elastic here, but it's all right. Okay. And they shouldn't be too tight. See, they're kind of kind of loose, but you don't want them super loose either, otherwise your inserts are going to sort of fall forward and fall out the side of the book. So I have a little bit of elastic left over. Maybe I can use that for something. I don't know for sure. So this is what it looks like in the middle, on the inside, I mean. And then this is what it'll look like on the outside, where the elastics just run horizontal. Okay, so then I have some signatures or inserts prepared. Um, I don't have them sewn. You, you can put them in loose like this, where it just uh, drapes over the elastic like that, and they stay in just fine. They stay perfectly fine. Or you could pamphlet stitch this first and then insert it into the elastic, or even sew it. Um, whatever you'd like to do, but I have these just sort of loose. So I'm going to insert those so you can see how this works. Just separate those two elastics. That goes there. Grab that other center elastic and that goes there. And then the last one goes like that. Um, the other book that I did in part one, I used twine instead of elastic, which works the exact same way, only to, um, to remove them you have to un undo your, um, I wouldn't do a knot here, I would do a bow, and you have to undo that bow to sort of uh, get these in and out, but you can do it with twine too. But today I just decided to use elastic and there it is. So that's how you finish it in the TN style. Let's get our let's get our closure though. And I really like this. I think it is it is awesome. I think it is awesome. But next I'll show you how to bind it bind those uh, it I guess it would be signature it's called signatures I guess if it's in a book. So what I do here is just hold a little bit over the hole, wrap this around, and then come out and give it another extra little room so you can tie a knot. Also, you don't want it super tight if you're, especially like I'm going to decorate some of these pages and it's going to get a little bigger. So just tie this, try to get it. measured a little bit by hand there. So I'm going to tie this in a knot. And what I usually do is put a little charm or a, like a decorative paper clip um cuz my hole is my hole is pretty big and even if it weren't this big, if it were a smaller one, still I have it I you could tug real hard on this and the knot will just pull right through. So I'm looking around, um, see if I have something handy that I can use. Um, well, rats, I don't. Just, just one second here. 
I'm going to grab a paper clip and show you what I'm talking about. All right, so before I pull that knot tight, I'm going to just put this paper clip around it or in 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 the loop of the knot and get it going here. Safety pin, bulb pin. Um, I do, I've done bulb pin with just a few beads on it. That looks cute. So now I've got a little stopper for the elastic, for the knot. We don't want the knot to go through. Okay. So I, I have the end here, and I just grabbed the loop of the other end. I'm going to poke that down through our eyelet in the center and pull it. And there we have it, and it's nice and secure, and it won't pull out of the hole because of that paper clip. Safety pins look are, are cute, especially with the charm dangle on it. Anyway, so that's it for this. Let me get ready for the next book, and we will... Just go ahead and bind this um, like a regular book. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. I'm back. So uh, we already covered the TN style, and this is all. Now, this one, this part here, is just to show you that um, we can treat this now like any other book binding. And we do have several tutorials on book binding, um, and I will link a couple of those down below for sure. So what I did was I made a template. Um, I have four signatures here that I'm going to put in the book. So I made four lines. And even They're evenly spaced. And it's as, as wide as my spine, which is two and a half inches. This one was super easy. So you, if you have four signatures, you need five spaces. So two and a half divided by five, very easy. So it was just a half inch increments there. And I made sure there's a quarter inch space here, a quarter inch space here, and then I clipped it in. All right, so what I'm going to do next is poke my holes. So at each intersection, I did, I did halfway. This horizontal line is halfway. And then this is a half inch down. This is a half inch up. And I just poked a hole. I've already poked holes in my, my template. And uh, now I'm just going to poke those same holes right through my spine to the to the other side of the book. Just poke it right through. So you've got your layers of chipboard and cardstock and you'll need a sharp object and all is perfect. Alright, so you can see the holes there. Um, the the paper has a white core, so I might need to just tap that with ink when I'm done here, but but I will just go ahead and poke all these holes first. I'm holding it up. I know it's probably not the best idea to do it right over my signatures, but I'm, I'm holding it up a little bit, making sure I don't poke my fingers underneath. I've done I've done that before. These awls dangerous. <laughs> Alright, so I'm done with the template on the spine, so I'm going to take that off. And I always mark top because sometimes your measurement can be different from here to here. And then if you're always turning this, then your, your lines won't be straight. So, um, so I'm just going to sew one signature in with you because you don't need to watch all of it. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. And then I, I find um, bending at each line is very helpful. So I'm going to bend mine. And if you already have the holes poked in there, the bending is very, very easy. So so I'm going to sew my first signature in. And the way I do that. Uh, my pages. I want to make sure they're all facing the right way. And it looks like we're good to go. So then what I'll do is take my template 
It's the same size as the signature, so just make sure it's lined up top to bottom. Make sure the template's lined up. And then, you know, get those get those folds all as tight as you can. Tight as you can. And then clip it. And then we're going to poke holes in the same spot. And this is the first signature, so we'll be setting, um, we'll be uh, sewing it in the first the template out of there. All right, now I do have, I'm using waxed linen today, and it's cream colored, so it'll contrast with this, which I thought would be a nice look. So you'll take your needle and your thread. You could use twine or heavy thread. This is a waxed linen, which is, is super nice. So start out with the center hole through the signature, then down through the spine. And just give it a tug all right and then down through the same column of holes and in through the top or the bottom it doesn't really matter and then poke your poke your needle through the holes that you've already made in your signature if I could find it Okay, and everything's being held nice and tight with our clips, so it should should not be too much of a problem. Okay, then go all the way down to the bottom or the top, whatever you used, and then the same column of holes. Poke it all the way through. I need to straighten out or pull out my thread just a tiny bit. There we go. And then you're going to hold hold your thread going that way so that when you poke this down through here you won't you won't snag the thread with your needle. We don't want to do that. And through the same hole, whoops, that you already used. There we go. Simple as that. I sometimes use a little plier to help me get that. Okay. Okay, you saw me just go like this. It's probably not the best idea to tighten like that. The best way to do it is to tighten straight up. That way you're not elongating any of your holds, holes. Check to make sure this is nice and tight. Just tug straight up. All right, and then we don't need the needle anymore. We're going to make sure one of our tails is on one side of the signature string and the other one is on the other side. And then just tie a knot. Just tie a square knot. So do one way and then do the opposite way. Tie it and then clip it off. All right. And you guys probably all know how to do that. I will also, like I said, I'll also leave some links. So I'm not going to show you all five, four of my signatures getting sewn in, but that's how you would do it, just like a regular book. Now, um, I should also mention that you can glue your pockets on um, or flips or whatever you want to do. Just glue them straight onto your inside cover here. Um, I'll be doing some of that in here as well. So um, probably um, pockets or tucks or or a little flip out, something like that. So those just get glued right onto your end papers. And there you have it. So I'm excited to get this this one sewn in too, but I won't make you watch me do the whole thing. So I'm just gonna set them in there for now. So we've got, we've got this little book with the signatures sewn directly into the spine. And these are repurposed book covers that have new life now. And I'll be doing I'll be decorating these up so it doesn't look like much now but this will expand with decorations and so I planned it that way and this one as well 
this one will expand with decorations. I'm super excited about these and can't wait to get them finished. So um, I'm going to upload this video so you can have the information and um, and uh, I appreciate my subbies for reminding me I needed to do part two and I hope this answered your questions. So take care everybody and it was my pleasure to be with you today and I just uh, appreciate you so much. So we'll see you later. Bye.